Thank you, witnesses, for being here. It's good to see our former colleague, the Attorney General, uh, Attorney General Ellison. If you conspire to reduce the output of a good, it's called restraint of trade. And when you form a cartel to limit supply, it's restraint of trade. And more importantly, it's illegal. And it's illegal because it drives up the cost to consumers, to Americans, to the people we represent. And it sure looks like that's exactly what these three organizations are engaged in. Now, they'll say it's for a good cause. We're going to save the planet. Never mind that the cost of food's going to go up, the cost of fuel's going to go up, there's going to be less airline flights, there's going to be less cars. Never mind all that. We're saving the world. But courts have been clear, very clear. So, quote, social justifications proffered for restraint of trade do not make it any less unlawful. How does this conspiracy work? Series. Cowpers and Arjuna, our witnesses today, formed this group called Climate Action 100. I'm sure the chairman talked about it already. They described themselves as the global navy in a war to decarbonize companies. 700 member investors, $68 trillion in assets. Those member investors are required to sign this statement and agree, as Mr. Massey just pointed out, the chairman just pointed out. They push companies to, that they invest into disclose and reduce emissions, in some cases reduce the output of their product. And what do we know about these groups? Well, here's what Siri said. This is a quote from them. Siri's objective is to, quote, make access to finance dependent on the transition to net zero by fundamentally rewriting the rules of capital formation. Arjuna said this, U.S. is facing a second civil war led by a pro-Christian agenda. And this war will be fought by the investors who have a voice in how corporate America responds to this pro-Christian, wow. What does this global war, this civil war mean to consumers, to the American people? If these guys get their way, what does it mean? Even though the demand for energy is on the way up, more energy demand around the world, they say fossil fuel should stay in the ground. They want to, literally, this is in there, they want to end the internal combustion engine in 10 years. They want to reduce air travel by 12%. They even want to restrict the amount of beef we consume. One and a half hamburgers a week. Chairman Massey eats that every meal from his grass-fed beef on his farm in northern Kentucky. But oh, no, no, one and a half's all you're allowed a week, Thomas, forget Mr. Massey, Chair, Mr. Chairman, they want to make it, think about this, more expensive to drive, more expensive to fly. And when you're waiting around the train station for the high-speed rail, you can order a hamburger while you're waiting, unless you've already had one that week. Less coal, less cars, less cows. They even said cows are the new coal. This is, I mean, this is crazy. Oh, and by the way, the Democrats agree with all this. I want to play a quick clip from last Congress one of our colleagues, when we had Chevron, BP, we had the oil and gas companies in front of us. Here's what, here's, uh, what, what, what you watch this, this questioning from Mr. Khanna, one of our colleagues. Uh, are you embarrassed as an American company that your production is going up while the European counterparts are going down? Congressman, as we have already heard, uh, that's enough. I mean, we got the point. The point. He's actually wanting oil companies to produce less oil. I thought when you're in business to do something, you kind of want to make more of the product, sell more of the product. I mean, that's what we're up against right here. That's why this hearing is so important. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for putting this together. It's important that we stop where climate action wants to take the country. I yield back. I thank the chairman. Without objection, all other opening statements will be included in the record. We will now introduce today's witnesses. Ms. Mandy Lubber is president and CEO of Ceres. Ceres is a nonprofit organization that seeks to advance its climate, social, and governance goals through interactions with investors, companies, and policymakers. Ms. Natasha Lamb is chief investment officer, managing partner, and portfolio manager at Arjuna Capital. Arjuna is an investment firm with a focus on environmental, social, and governance ESG factors. Mr. Dan Bienvenu is the interim chief investment officer at CalPERS. CalPERS manages the pension and health benefits for more than one and a half million California public employees. And Mr. Keith Ellison, welcome back to Congress. Uh, he's the Attorney General of the State of Minnesota. And prosperity, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General. We will now proceed under the five-minute rule with questions. 
The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Wyoming for five minutes. Thank you. Mr. Bienvenu, in your testimony, you state that to be clear, this is engagement, not divestment. We would agree, which is why the report this committee put out yesterday came to the same conclusion. Where we disagree is that your engagement is designed to fundamentally change business and industries to the detriment of consumers in a matter which is indeed not collaboration, but collusion. CalPERS is a founding member of Climate Action 100. Is that correct? Climate Action 100 Plus was founded by Ceres and uh, CalPERS was involved in its creation early on. And CalPERS is a founding member of Climate Action 100, correct? Well, Cal CalPERS is a founding member and a signatory to Climate Thank Action you. 100 Plus. And Climate Action 100 has 170 focused companies, 42 of them being oil and gas companies. Is that also correct? Climate Action 100 Plus has 170 focus companies and 42 oil and gas companies where we come together and discuss ideas is, and make it, independent it, the, decisions on how we on how we. So, so my them. statement is correct, is that right? As I said, Cal, Climate Action 100 Plus has 170 focus companies, as I said in my opening statement, and 42 of them are oil and gas companies where we come together to discuss independent. And one of the objectives of the Climate Action 100 is for these focus companies to reduce their emissions, is that correct? Climate change is something that is happening. Would you please answer my question? There's context to your question. And one of the objectives of Climate Action 100 is for these focus companies to reduce their emissions. Is that correct? Climate change is something that is happening. Is that correct? Answer my question, please. As I say, climate change is something that is happening. Andrew Bihar, the CEO of As You Sow, testified in his deposition that, quote, an oil and gas company could not reach net zero while continuing to produce fossil fuels, unquote. And As You Sow President Daniel Fuguer testified that, quote, ultimately fossil fuel use has to be reduced, unquote. And GFAN's co-chair, Mark Carney, testified to the committee that, quote, more than half of the world's coal reserves need to stay in the ground in order for the world to be in line with Paris, unquote. So for the 42 oil and gas companies that Climate Action 100 focuses on, the way for them to reduce emissions would be for them to reduce their outputs. Is that correct? Can you repeat the question, please? For the 42 oil and gas companies that Climate Action 100 focuses on, the way for them to reduce emissions would be for them to reduce their outputs. Is that correct? What we focus on with the companies that we engage. Why won't you answer my question? I'm attempting to answer your question. No, you're not. You're on, trying to avoid it. What we focus on with the companies that we engage is for them to be long-term And to reduce their productive. outputs, correct? We would never suggest that an organization <clears throat> that is an oil is company. Is CalPERS committed to pursuing policies which cuts fossil fuel outputs, even if that would increase prices on the American people? CalPERS is focused on generating returns to pay pensions over generations. And even if it makes it more difficult for them to put gasoline in their cars? Again, our North Star is about producing returns That's to pay pensions. That's not what you write, and it's not what you've testified to previously. Ms. Lover, Ceres is a co-founder and member of Climate Action 100. Is that also correct? Has Ceres and Climate Action 100 identified the ag sector, especially livestock production, as an industry which must reduce its emissions? Microphone, Would you turn please. on your microphone, please? I believe there are some ag sector companies in that cohort. Okay. And there's no way for the ag sector to reach net zero without reducing beef production, is there? Uh, I don't know that that's clear. There are ways to do farming. There are ways to create <laughs> energy that are less greenhouse gas emitting. I mean, many of the oil and gas companies that you were talking about, it's not about not producing. It's about creating options and transforming their technologies and capturing the oil and gas emissions. You know, it, it's very interesting to me. My mother is 100 years old. She'll be 101. And the changes that she's seen in the last 100 years are absolutely mind-blowing in terms of the technological advances. 
the increase in life expectancy, the decrease in, in infant mortality rate, our overall prosperity, what we have created in this country. And there's one reason why we have seen the prosperity in the last 100 years that, that has never been rivaled in world history, and it's because of the commercial production of affordable energy. Every single one of you and your organizations want to destroy that. You are evil and what you are attempting to do and the violations of law that you are engaged in is absolutely stunning. And I think it's telling that you won't answer my questions. Gentleman With that, I yield. From California and now recognize the gentleman from Florida. Mr. Bienvenu, how much do you invest each year on behalf of how many of your members? We manage a $500 billion portfolio on behalf of our 2.2 million members and beneficiaries. And you've highlighted your principal responsibility is return for those beneficiaries, right? Correct. Everything that we do every day is about generating returns to pay benefits. And you've worked there 20 years. You were, you've been de the principal deputy since 2020, right? I was named the deputy chief investment officer in August of 2020, or I'm sorry, in April of 2020. Okay, great. And, and so I think there's some parallels between what's going on with ESG and DEI. You, you don't deny that CalPERS has a DEI agenda, right? CalPERS is all about generating returns to pay benefits, and every, every topic that we approach is through that lens. Well, does DEI improve the returns to your investors? I think part of good governance of a company is having diverse perspectives brought to bear as they manage that company, and I feel strongly about that for the investment team that I lead also. We want diverse Terrific. perspectives. And, and, and what is the evidence that, that, that you rely on for the belief that the DEI agenda will produce better returns? Is there any study, report, analysis? You know, as an investor, I read research reports constantly. I probably read five, six, eight of them a day. So uh, over the course of my career, that's probably been thousands. I know, of I'm, I'm just reports. wondering, is there one that kind of sticks in out in your mind? You can say, Congressman, I'm here to do good by these 2.2 million beneficiaries and my embrace of DEI. This is what I can point to as the evidence that, that that's helping them. Every data-based study can tell lots of different things, and every data works that way. That's the way investing works. And remember that when we're focused on investing, we're focused on how we- Mr. Bam, you, you can either cite a study or you can't. You can't, right? Okay. In the thousands of studies that I- Just name one, okay. Through, well, here's I what, I found that. a study that actually CalPERS did. You guys did this study. It's entitled Emerging Diverse Manager Data Report. And, and, and I'm citing from the third, oh, I'm sorry, the. Citing from the uh, sixth page of report where it says, since inception, current diverse managers generally underperformed non-diverse managers in the asset class in the policy benchmark. Are you familiar with this report? Can I see a copy of that study, please? Well, I, I, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record the emerging diverse manager report uh, published by CalPERS. Without objection. I, I'm not able to show it to you now, but you don't have any basis to disagree with the agency you've been a part of leading, saying that the diverse, the DEI hires aren't doing as well as the non-DEI hires. As I say, when we think about diversity, we think about diverse perspectives being brought to bear on investment decisions. Right, but okay, so those are two different things, Mr. Bienvenu, because on one hand, there's re provide returns for my investors. And what your own data says is that your DEI hires underperform there. And then on the other hand, you say, well, all these diverse perspectives are really important. But I worry about the market manipulation and the bullying because as I review what CalPERS has put out under its own investment guidelines, you, you brag about the fact that you voted against 768 directors at the companies you invest in most recently. And then in the prior year, you'd only voted against 133 directors. So is CalPERS voting against people as directors for companies based on their skin color? We take up every vote independently based on the merits of the vote itself. Right, but do you ever consider like someone's skin color? Because it's pretty immutable. People don't choose to be white or black or Asian. They just are. We choose based on what will make the okay, best so oversight. You're under oath here, company. Mr. Bienvenu. Can you deny under oath that CalPERS is voting against directors based on the color of their skin. I can tell you we make every vote based on what will make that the best board for oversight of that company. Right, but, but the best board is actually not doing so well. So, Mr. Chairman, let's look at the scorecard. 
in the state of Florida where we aren't pushing ESG and DEI, the Florida retirement system is netting a 7.5% uh, notch for the fiscal year. May I enter that on the record? No objection. And CalPERS reports only 5.8% for 2022 to 2023. Can I enter that on the record as well? Without objection. So, so you're not performing as well. Your own data says that your DEI hires aren't performing as well. And you were there for 20 years. And you applied twice for the chief investment position and you were passed over for that position twice, and you said you weren't gonna apply for it the third time because you'd been passed over twice, and I guess they've hired an immigrant to do that job instead. Do you think that maybe you were passed over for some of these DEI reasons? Calper's hiring decisions is, is their own hiring decisions, and I'm not really a part of that candidate. Uh, cl depending, clearly you aren't, and I think we all know why. I yield back. What purpose does the gentleman from Wyoming seek recognition? I just ask for unanimous consent to submit two articles into the record. The moral high ground, the left's so-called morally superior policies kill millions and impoverish billions, and a Hawaii Five uh-oh, power outages in paradise, how Hawaii's mandated energy transition set the table for rolling blackouts. Without objection. Uh, emissions, do you have to reduce production, Mr. Benvenu? Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? To reduce emissions, do you have to reduce production? I mean, you guys said Climate Action 100, you're all part of this group. You said your goal is to reduce carbon emissions, and you got this focus list, 170 companies that you're targeting, change how they do things, and you said of that 170, one quarter of them are oil and gas companies. 42 are oil and gas companies. And what I want to know is in order to reduce carbon emissions, do those 42 companies, oil and gas companies, on the target list, on the focus list, do they have to reduce production? I don't think anybody knows how the climate transition is going to take place. Whether that's, that's not what I ask you. Do they have to reduce production or not? They're in the business of making oil and gas, producing oil and gas. And I'm asking you, do they have to stop or lower, decrease oil and gas production? As I say, I don't think anybody knows how the climate Ms. transition. Ms. Lamb, what do you think? I think that the oil and gas industry is facing enormous headwinds because of global emissions going up so much. And so I think that those companies are, are challenged and are going to have I didn't to ask if they were challenged. I didn't ask about headwinds. I asked a simple question. Do you think they have to reduce production of oil and gas? I think each company needs to take a look at their business model and figure out so how to So you don't think that? They can, they, can, they, can, they, can, uh, they can increase production? You're okay with that? I think that each oil and gas if company a company needs to take making a look. their product wants to make more of the product, are you okay with that? I think that the product of oil and gas companies is energy, and they can look and see how they can best produce energy for their customers. So what do you mean? When you got 42 oil and gas companies on your focus list, and you want to reduce carbon emissions, are oil and gas companies going to be allowed to under encourage, engage, whatever term you want to use? Are they going to be able to make more oil and gas or less oil and gas? What do you think they should do? Oil and gas companies can do whatever they want because... Well, uh, then why are they on your focus list? What are you trying to get them to do? As investors that consider the financial... Ms. Luber, will you answer the question? Because the other two folks won't. Do you yes. think oil and gas companies should be able to make more oil and gas, or do they have to make less? They don't necessarily have to make less. Let me give you So do you guys example. all disagree with Mr. Khanna? No, no, no. I, I played Mr. Khanna's clip. Congressman Ro Khanna said to the CEO of Chevron, are you embarrassed? I'll read it. Are you embarrassed that an American company, that as an American company, your production is going up? Should they be embarrassed because they're producing more? Should an oil and gas company be embarrassed because they're producing more oil and gas? No, oil and gas companies should limit their greenhouse gas emissions. That doesn't immediately mean they produce less. Oil and gas oh, companies... Oh, so it means later they produce less? No, what it means is they... Um, are you disagreeing? Their, Here's no, a question. Are you disagreeing with Mr. Congressman Khanna, or are you agreeing with him? Re say, please repeat what he said. He said, are, he said to the CEO of Chevron, are you embarrassed as an American company that you're producing, that, you're, that your production is going up? Yeah, I don't know. Obviously wanting the production to go down. I don't know the context. I do know well, that's that the context. He, wanted, he, he went through all of them. All of them said... Will you, will you pledge to reduce production? I'm just asking you guys, as the guys who have 42 oil and gas companies on your target list, is it okay for oil and gas companies to actually increase oil and gas production? If they could decrease their emissions in the process, I think they would be looked at differently. Wow. Regardless, so many of the oil and gas companies 
have decreased their methane emissions. Anybody recently leave Climate Action 100? Any of your, your, uh, your investment members, your member investors, anyone recently leave Climate Action 100? About a dozen. About a dozen? Can yep. you name some of those companies? Sure. Small um, companies, big companies, big investors, small investors, who were they? Uh, some combination, but I would argue more, and there were some household names. I would also Some big say, ones, weren't there? Yep. BlackRock. BlackRock's um, pretty JP big. Morgan. In JP both, Morgan, that's pretty big. In all of those Vanguard. Cases, Vanguard, they've said they're going to continue Street. fighting for climate Imco, reduction. Right, they're some of the biggest investor and asset managers in the world. They all left your group. Why'd they leave? Well, they all have different reasons. BlackRock is only well, they all left at sort of the same time. There must be something going on here. They've heard a lot. They've got a lot of pressure from Congress and others that they should leave. BlackRock said to us, we're going to keep pressure on anybody. We just want to know what you guys are up to. Forty two well, oil and gas uh, companies on your focus list. And you can't even tell me if you want production of oil and gas to go up or down for them. No, what I have said was that some of them have increased production but reduced emissions. The greenhouse gas emissions that are, are you for ending? Are you for ending the internal combustion engine in the next ten years? Uh, that is the direction that our government is going, and I think it's the direction that the automakers have. You agree with that? Makes sense. Getting rid us. of the internal combustion engine in ten years. Uh, yes. Are you for reducing airline flight travel by twelve percent? Uh, I don't know the numbers for airline flight. But do you want it to go down? Uh, not necessarily. I don't think. What about no, what no, about ham okay? The, well, the last question is: What about hamburgers? Where do you stand on hamburgers? Is one and a half a week enough, or do we get, or, or do we get more? Uh, uh, Chairman Massey wants to know. He's got some of the best grass-fed beef I've ever have had. Freedom of diet. What's that? I said people should have freedom of diet. Oh, so you don't agree with that? Well, in all cases, there are other ways to chat to fix the challenges. Newsflash: Series is okay with us eating more hamburger, Chairman. Newsflash: Series is okay with that. Eat what you would like. I yield back. Thank you. I recognize.